Hello, my name is Erin Griffin, um, and tonight I'm talking to you about the right to not fear. I don't normally reflect on gender, honestly, uh, but for the sake of this month and this evening, I am going to talk about my perspective on it. No matter where you are in the world, what industry are you, you are in, or how you are raised, I realize that for women, it seems like we constantly have to fear something. There's a fear of being inferior, a fear of leadership, a fear of unequal pay, a fear of traveling alone, and a fear of assault. I think literally every time I step out of the door, I have to be afraid of that. And I realize that is a reality. Um, but what we cannot control is that we're constantly reminded of it. That's something that the society constantly wants to put in our minds and for me, I choose to not constantly think about this fear and associating with everything I do. The fact that I'm a female will only prohibit me from doing the work I do overseas. We have a right not to fear. I'm a female filmmaker. I used to work in tech, and I travel the world. I'd say all the odds are against me. So for me to not be conscious of this will only eliminate, if actually, uh, make me able to do my work even better. I can't take all the credit for the empowerment I feel. My parents uh, were humanitarians. In the 1970s, they worked overseas. My mom worked in uh, refugee camps in Cambodia and Thailand, and my dad lived in Bangladesh for three years. I also had a grandfather that was in politics, and he was constantly fighting social injustices. So the stage for us was set early. Our role in this world was not to constantly think about ourselves, but what we were going to do was travel the world and not see differences and break borders and actually connect with people and show empathy. By the time that I grew up, I'll have to say that I didn't actually think I would be this feisty. Um, that's me holding a bug. And by the time I was 23, I ended up getting hired at Google. I worked in advertising sales, and I happened to actually work for one of the top VPs in the industry, and she did empower me. She did actually push me outside of my comfortable uh, workspace. She gave me a job description that actually wasn't what I was hired for. And eventually, I was actually able to leave and direct and produce documentaries full time. So now today, um, I do travel to not the safest areas. I don't have quite the normal life. Um, but I tackle issues that focus on the ones that no one really wants to talk about, human rights issues in post-conflict zones, from Northern Ireland to Israel-Palestine, Rwanda, and now Darfur. In 2009, at, uh, I traveled to Rwanda with uh, nine other individuals. Our purpose in being in Rwanda was actually to uh, work with a women's cooperative that focused on building business initiatives with them and teaching them skills that they weren't necessarily familiar with. In the four months we were there, we brought these women to a place that they were succeeding. But at the end of the four months, we had to leave. And what was important in our influence in being there and our hope in empowering them was that they were actually going to do the work that was going to carry them on after we left. In the final weeks I was in Rwanda, my perspective and my role was actually reversed. Um, I was asked to attend a reconciliation seminar on the border of Tanzania. And there would be these perpetrators coming after 14 years uh, after the genocide and being released back into society. And I was invited to be a part of it, but at first, I denied the invitation because I said it was not my place. Who was I to actually witness them in their most intimate moments? My perspective shifted from being a female among females to a female among men. When we first pulled up to the seminar, I remember rounding the corner, and we were in this car, and I was in the back seat, and there was this giant tree, this oak tree, and at the base of the tree were 60 men peering through the window at me. And I remember my heart just started beating out of my chest. And my stomach had the biggest knot in it. And I, 
I just didn't know what I had gotten myself into. And I had to quickly remember not that I was a female, but that I was a human. Those four days really changed my life. Um, just showing empathy, relating with them, being with them, that's what it was about. But I couldn't get these images out of my head of their eyes peering at me. These weren't just any men that I was getting close to. These were some of the worst murders in history. That's a photo of me amongst the group. I look at this now, and I'm thinking about it, and obviously I stand out. Um, but in that situation, I wasn't thinking about the fact that I was a female. It was just the fact that I was a human, and I would not have been able to understand them and listen to them and for them to relate to me if I was constantly conscious of that. I, d I would say that there was this barrier that was broken in the fact that I was a female initially because they weren't threatened by me, but that enabled them to just trust me even more, and eventually they asked me to tell the world that they were sorry. Those experiences really influenced the type of filmmaker I am today. I travel to areas that aren't that beneficial for women to foster in. I am constantly you know, fearful of certain things. That is a reality. Um, if I have to cover up, wear a skirt, that's just the reality I have to consider in order to stay safe. But for me, the type of filmmakers that I work with, they're not only incredibly talented females, but they're incredibly talented men that are constantly empowering me to do my work. It's not that they're a male filmmaker and I'm a female filmmaker. We're just filmmakers, and I think that's okay. And that is my goal. I think if we are constantly conscious of that, we would not be creating the, the products that we are. We're just humans, we tell stories, we're documentary filmmakers, we break expectations. We don't see our differences. Here's a statistic. Females direct more documentaries than narrative films, 34% to almost 17%. Now I can look at that and I can say, okay, at least I have something going for me. I make documentaries. But at the end of the day, those are very low numbers. So. I think that for me, I don't want to let a statistic define me. I'm not making documentaries because I want to break a st statistic. I'm not making documentaries just to be a female filmmaker. I do believe that men and women are different. I think we bring a different balance to the production. We're constantly, uh, the male filmmakers, they're telling me, what, what questions do you want to ask, Erin? When's the next film you're going to direct? It's not a matter of why I'm not directing right now, the film we're producing. It's, it's I'll get to that. I'm working with extremely talented people and that's my choice. I think we're constantly perpetuating this society that we're fearful because we're conscious of our gender when we go into the workplace. But it's about the work that we produce. I ask you what your fears are and if they control you. And if you were to eliminate those fears, how much more work do you think you could actually accomplish? Thank you.